Hi, my name is Brian, and tonight I'm going to talk about how to design a skimmer. Um, you know, a skimmer is also known as a foam fra fractionator, and it's a device that uses bubbles of air, sometimes you can use ozone, normally it's air, to latch on to organic molecules that are dissolved in the water and get rid of them. If you're not quite sure on skimmers, the easiest way to understand a skimmer is to go to the beach. Sea foam is exactly what a skimmer does in a saltwater tank. It gets gunk out of the water. So, there are, there's one basic design, so we'll start there. So, the basic design looks like this, and this is what's called a collection cup up here, and crap collects in there. This is where there's foam, and this is where there is water. So I only use purple for water. Okay, and there is a inlet and an outlet, and depending on the skimmer design, this can vary a little. It can be in one of a couple different places. So all skimmers share this. The primary difference between the different skimmer models is where does the water go in and how are the bubbles made. So as far as how the, the water goes in, you can either bring it in at the bottom and go up to the top and out. That's called a, a um, co-flow skimmer. You don't see those much anymore. Um, an in-tank model, something really, really basic, that, that's what that would be. Counterflow, which is what I'm doing, in at the top, water goes down, bubbles go up. That's that's countercurrent. And what you see a lot of on the market is where they bring the water in at the bottom at high velocity and they swirl it around in here and eventually it exits out back out the bottom. Uh, I don't know what you call that. Um, but there's a lot of it out there. It does work for some people. So if you're one of those folks that this works great for, that's fantastic, but that's not what I'm going to talk about how to build. So there are, let me talk a little bit about how to make bubbles. So one way is with an air pump and an air stone. And another way is what's called a venturi. So high velocity, high pressure water goes through here, it goes through a narrow opening here, and out comes water with, and you introduce air in here, and out comes water with bubbles in it. So one, two, and then there's another model which is gaining popularity and it's called a pinwheel skimmer. A couple different names for it. Essentially you have a pump and in the pump is this wheel. So this is my drawing and we'll just call this a motor. So water comes in and um, water and bubbles come out. And basically what this does, it chops the, the air up while it's inside the impeller cavity. So this is efficient, this is efficient, this is not efficient. Um, this is a really expensive way to make bubbles because it uses a, a heavy duty um, pump to do it. So what we're gonna focus on is using an air stone, and there's more than one kind of air stone, with a counter current skimmer. So we'll just go ahead and simplify this drawing. I'm going to switch to red so that you can see the design. So water comes in, water goes out. And you can use a skim uh, pro um, you can use an airstone made out of ceramic, wood, or you can use a, a diaphragm-based um, air stone. I'm going to use a diaphragm-based air stone. Um, commercial sewage systems use the same principle, and they use a diaphragm made of EPDM rubber. It's about $15. Should last for about a year. My theory thinking is, if it lasts for a year in sewage, it'll last for a year in salt water. Um, so that will be located here, 
and it will create bubbles. It will be fed with an air pump, such as a HACO. HACO pump is rated for pressure. They're used very commonly in koi ponds. This is also used in koi ponds very, very commonly. Um, I've seen these anywhere from $15 to $50. Um, they come in coarse, medium, and fine. I'll be using a fine bubble size. Um, if this doesn't work to my liking, I'll replace it with an air stone uh, made out of either wood or ceramic. So this is a highly experimental concept. A um, couple keys are I need to pass my water through this twice uh, per, per day. So flow rate is one of my challenges. In my case, it's 375 gallons per hour for my tank. Air should be 13% of this, so this works out to 6.75 gallons per minute, and about 0.7 CFM per minute is what 13% of that is. Um, I've worked those out independently. If you have not read Escobar's Aquatic Systems Maintenance or Aquatic Systems Engineering, highly recommend the book. Great book, talks about all this in detail. You can also Google, um, and there is a page out there that has the substance of it, of how to design this. Um, so, you want to maximize this and this. So you want as large of a reaction chamber as possible, and you want the water to be in contact with the air for as long as possible, but approximately two minutes is how long you want the air to be in here. It takes two minutes for the largest particles to attach to the air and come out of solution. So when you see one of these skimmers that uses what I call the swirly method, um, a whole lot of air for 30 seconds isn't going to get some of the organics out of the water. Yeah. Does it work? Well, obviously it works because they sell them and people don't take them back. But it doesn't mean that it's an ideal setup. So, it's important to understand something about skimmers. This is time. And this is skimmate. Skimmate is the name we give to material that's pulled out of the water by a skimmer. So, when we first start a skimmer, we're up here. As time goes on, we get more of the crap out of the water. We come down to here, and it basically looks like this. Now, you have animals that are adding, you know, crap to the water. So your animals may be going like this, adding bio load to your tank. If something dies, it may go way up like that. So what you have to understand is a skimmer is capable of removing a given amount of crap from the water for a given period of time. Bigger skimmer removes more junk from the water. And um, over time, it's going to level out to where the amount that's going in is equal to the amount that can be taken out, and it'll establish what's called equilibrium. Bigger skimmers will drive this number down. Smaller skimmers will maybe not go as far. And as long as you can get this to a point where it gets the majority of the crap out of the tank, you're good. So don't get caught up in, oh, well, I can only do 350 gallons per hour of flow, and, you know, Brian said, gosh, you know, you need 375 for a 700-gallon system. Well, you know, 350 is going to be just fine. Um, you want to shoot for a couple times a day. So part of my design goal is to reduce the cost of operating my tank, and in doing so to eliminate as many pumps as I can. So I'm using return water from the display tank that's headed to the to the um, refugium in the sump and I'm just running through my skimmer. So here's how the skimmer is actually going to be built. Um, for me it's a 12 inch piece of PVC and so it'll be a 12 inch piece of PVC and it will step down to a four inch piece of PVC. And then I'm gonna mount a bucket up here. I know that sounds silly, but that's I'm gonna make a collection cup out of a bucket. And I'm worried about this. This is gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of six to seven feet. So I'm worried about tipping over. 
So what I'm going to do is put a block of concrete at the bottom to hold it still. My water will come in and my air will be fed from over here. And my water will exit and then come almost up before it goes somewhere else. So we'll just draw this. And this is actually an important detail and there will be a little exit here. This lets air out of my line, prevents me from getting um, a vacuum lock, and more importantly my water level will equalize with the top of that, that pipe. So this is going to be two inch in, one and a half inch out, and this is an area I don't think is really well understood. Um, two inch pipe can comfortably handle about 1500 gallons per hour as a gravity drain. Uh, one and a half inch pipe can probably handle somewhere in the neighborhood of 900 gallons per hour. So 375 gallons per hour is really just nothing. Um, and uh, you know, I like to have over capacity on my pipes because it means there's just I, I don't have issues. So you know, you're welcome to use smaller pipes. Um, I encourage you to do your homework, look up the flow rates, and, and do what works best for you. But this is what I'm going to build. So I'll do another couple of videos, probably a series of videos on the construction of this. And if you have questions, as always, post them. If I think they're pertinent, I'll respond to them. And um, if it's something I've addressed in my video, I'm going to tell you, go, hey, go watch such and such video. Um, I, you know, I'm building this because it'll have a lower cost of operation over the long term. And uh, $30 a month over 10 years is a lot of electricity to dump into uh, a pump. Um, and, and that's what the Venturi model happens to run. Large skimmers are really expensive, and most of the things that are for sale in the aquarium trade are advertised with exaggerated capabilities. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm not going to name names, but, uh, you know, we've all seen the the wonder thing that has tons of fluff in it so um, I like to design my own equipment I have a source for the 12 inch PVC so I can get 12 inch PVC for free I have a friend that's in the construction business and this is surplus to him that they're just going to throw away um, 12 inch PVC is kind of on the expensive side I will use uniseals here and here and here because uniseals are just a couple of dollars and they'll work just fine in this environment um, and it lowers my cost of making this. So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed my video.